UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, joined as always by Allison Taylor. The fall sports calendar is right around the corner and two of the programs that are going to get underway real soon are going to be featured on this week's edition. We'll meet our guests in just a minute. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. It all gets kicked off by UCLA men's soccer on August 27th when they travel to take on Louisville. It's a tough start to the season, but these guys are ready for it. We're pleased to be joined by three of the stars of the soccer team, Edder Ariola, Andy Rose, and Kellen Rowe. Gentlemen, welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Edder, your senior season. Last year, the Bruins 16-5-1 NCAA quarter finalists. Yeah. What are your expectations for this year? Um, for me, I'm trying to focus on uh, consistency. Uh, I've had a lot of ups and downs throughout my previous seasons, and that's the main thing I want to focus on. And as well as a team, I want the team to start really strong and end like the way we ended last season, if not make it all the way through. And you guys, championship. you guys had some nail biters last year toward the end. Uh, tell us about the excitement of getting into tournament play. Yeah, you know, I mean, ever since I've been here, we've, we've been fortunate enough to do pretty well in the tournaments. That was the second year in a row we've gone to the Elite Eight, um, which, you know, to be honest, a program like this probably isn't good enough. Um, this season we have higher expectations, but, uh, you know, we had some great games. Dartmouth was a great game, obviously winning 1-0 in, in overtime. And then uh, losing to Louisville, <coughs> excuse me, 5-4 was a pretty um, emotional game. Um, you know, obviously being up 2-0, 3-1, uh, kind of thinking you have it in the bag and, you know, credits them, they played a great second half. Um, you know, we, we think uh, the conditions probably didn't suit most of our California kids. <laughs> you don't like playing on ice? You know, I don't mind to come from England, <laughs> but, you know, a few of the guys, obviously, it was, it was a pretty tough game for us. Um, so, you know, we, we're looking to, uh, obviously, get some revenge maybe uh, in the next coming weeks against Louisville. Uh, but, you know, tournament play is brilliant, and uh, we're excited to hopefully get back there again this year. Kellen, Pac-10 Freshman of the Year last year. Great way to break into Westwood. Nice. What, what did you learn about yourself last year that you're going to carry into this season? Uh, well, last year coming in as a freshman, you, you definitely grow up. Uh, I learned from these guys. I have Andy behind me in the middle. Uh, he teaches me all the time, every game, every practice. He's talking to me, chirping at me, you know, do this, do that. And I have definitely learned a lot from him. Um, Edder as well. He's a great attacking player. Um, him and I really have competitions at, in practice, uh, who's going to finish more balls, who's going to do this and that. Um, but I think the biggest thing is maturity. I definitely matured as the season went on. Um, you start off very nervous. My first game uh, was, I believe, Notre Dame. I don't remember the first five minutes because I was so <laughs> nervous. And uh, towards the end of the game, finally, you know, towards the end of the season, um, you really start to get a bigger role and you uh, I was very more confident, definitely. 
As Dave mentioned earlier, you guys are going to be facing Louisville in the next few weeks. And Andy, as you said, it was a very emotional game mm -hmm. the last time you guys met. So what is the team's mentality going, going into that game? You know, just the, the same we, as we approach every game. I guess uh, predominantly the same team as we had last year. All 11 stars are back, which is great. Pretty unheard of in college soccer, especially at you know, a program like UCLA. A lot of guys leave early the pro ranks. Um, we had a very young team last year with not a, not a great amount of expectation. You know, a lot of people said it was kind of rebuilding year. I think we, we proved them wrong. Uh, we tried to at least. And you know, Louisville is, is another great team. They're a great program. Um, we have a, a lot of respect for them, but uh, you know, we have a lot of belief in ourselves. And we're a very good side uh, with a lot of confidence. Returning all 11 starters, adding, you know, six, seven players is, is great as well. Four great freshmen, two awesome transfers who came in early. And obviously we get Chris Cummings and Fernando Monji back, which is huge for us. Um, so, you know, we'll go into it the same kind of mentality as we do every game. Just a lot of belief. You know, we have a great character and a great mentality about ourselves. Um, a lot of confidence and, and hopefully we'll get the result. Edder, Andy mentioned the game against Dartmouth and you had the game winner in extra time. Describe the feeling of, of pulling that one out. Yeah, I mean, um, it was actually my first two goals was playing at Drake Stadium since I've been here. So it was like one of the best feelings here playing at UCLA so I was happy that I was able to contribute to the team to take the team to the next round so it's a pretty exciting moment for me. You are one of the fastest players on the Bruins squad. You're like a blur out there and a lot of times you're stealth. I mean I called a couple of your matches last year and you just appear. How, how did you develop the knack of knowing where to be at the right time? It's just over time you know training and practice like knowing your movements it's, it's all part of the game how I learn like I'm good at like receiving the ball and just dribbling at people like with speed. I mean, it's just all training throughout these years I've been playing soccer, so. Andy, you cover a lot of ground. You're always out there at the midfield. Can always see you getting up there to win those 50-50 balls, but you can also attack. Uh, what's your strong points? What's your favorite part of the game? Um, my favorite part of the game has to be uh, just passing and creating. You know, I like to uh, spray long balls when I can and, and get the balls to, to our playmakers, Kellen and Edda. Um, you know, I, Usually when I'm out there, they're the two players I look for most. Um, and just kind of starting the attack from the defense, you know, getting the ball off the back four and, and trying to be a, a link player to, to the attack. And, uh, you know, just being a presence on the field as much as possible, giving guys an extra boost whenever they need, you know, making sure everyone's all right out there, feeling good and confident out there, and just talking as much as I can, trying to lead the team, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue that this season. Kellen, you scored seven last year, but you assisted on ten. What's more satisfying, getting the perfect pass onto somebody's boot or putting it in yourself? Uh, <laughs> it's satisfying either way because you know the team's winning and scoring. Um, personally, of course, I would love a goal, um, but the assist is just as easy and just as fun. Um, so I'd say the goal, but either way to help the team, I'm happy. Kellen, obviously you had a very outstanding freshman season last year. Are you feeling any extra pressures coming into this season? You have to stand up for what you did last year, or how are you feeling? Last year, was, it, no one knew really who I was. Uh, coming in as a freshman, there's not much. I wasn't part of the college game. Um, so it was definitely easier, I believe, than this year. I might have maybe a target on my back as well as these guys do. Um, so I do have an expectation with myself. My team has an expectation that I come in, and uh, I do, if not better, the same as I did last season. Andy, you mentioned something really interesting, uh, you know, about distributing the long balls. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're from Britain and British football, they use a lot of long balls, <laughs> European <laughs> football, but the American sides, a lot of times, just, you know, pattern control very methodically yeah. up the field. What, what is your background as a British footballer? How does that contribute to your philosophy of the game? You know, I've always been a, uh, a player who, who uh, in England, you develop that kind of long ball with a purpose, though. It's not just kind of kick and run. It's, uh, you know, purposely trying to find a, a player who's hopefully 40, 50 yards away and, and putting it on their foot or on their chest or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's something I've, I've developed and something I love to do. But, you know, with the coaching staff here and the, the technical players we have, it's very much one and two touch, keep it on the ground and, and uh, try and play, you know, kind of a Barcelona or Arsenal type soccer, um, you know, the college version, I guess. Um, so that's kind of my philosophy as well. I love to keep the ball uh, possessed. You know, I, I believe when you have the ball, you, you have a good chance of scoring and, and winning the game. If you don't have it, you can't score. So, 
you know, we try to instill that philosophy, just keep the ball, keep the ball, play simple, you know, and the chances will open up. And, you know, with, with guys like this on each side, it's, it's pretty easy to create chances. Edder, we talked about August 27th being your opener. That's an early start. Uh, when did you guys really kick it into high gear in your training to get ready for that opener? Well, during the uh, summer, we usually train on our own. We Not as much as a team because of the NCAA rules. So individually, we have to get mentally and physically prepared. So when preseason comes, we get together the team and get going from there. So. Are there any challenges that you guys think that the team faces this next year? What, what kind of individual obstacles are you guys looking to overcome? Well, you know, we do have uh, 11 starters coming back. Um, so we definitely have a target on ourselves, and everyone that expects us to do very well. So that's one huge one right there. Um, but for us, we're looking to just go out the season as we did last season, come in. Uh, we all know each other, so the chemistry's great. Um, we want to come in, do as best we can. We're looking for a national championship. When you look at teams that have played together, 11 starters is a remarkable thing coming back. You develop that sixth sense of where everybody's going to be on the field. When did that kind of click in last year where you started getting a sense of knowing where your teammates were going to be, what they expected of you? You know, when we first got our lineup, uh, it was very crazy. Uh, we didn't know who to put in where. We had so many freshmen starting, we didn't know what to do. I think towards the middle of the season, we definitely got a lineup going. And uh, once you do that, you kind of get used to each other. Um, instead of in, you know, uh, reacting to a player and what they're going to do, you're starting to anticipate. So now you're there one step early, and it's so much harder to defend that way, um, which is what we look to do next season. Um, but I definitely, uh, towards the end of the season, we were uh, on point all the time. We talked about playing in the adverse weather conditions in uh, uh, the tournament last year. Andy, you don't have to play in too many adverse weather conditions here in Westwood. Uh, <laughs> was that a big part of your, of your decision to come to UCLA? You know, my, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a decision I'll never regret. I've had an incredible experience here in Westwood. Uh, the moment I met Jorge, Eddie, and Kenny, the coaches, and uh, the second I stepped foot on campus, I knew this is where I was going to end up. Um, it's an incredible environment to play, to learn There's some great people. You know, I love the California lifestyle. It's very relaxed <laughs> and mellow. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, I knew it would be a great place to spend four years. You guys get a couple of transfers in, uh, Victor Munoz and Ryan Lee, who come in to join the UCLA program. Have you had a chance to really get to know them yet? Yeah, they came in uh, during spring, so it was great. Uh, we all got to know them. They're now living on campus. Uh, we see them every day. Um, I'm working with Victor at the camp uh, today, so it's really nice. They've really fit in. They gelled in perfectly. Um, we look for both of them to help us out, definitely. Before we close, I'll ask you each, what, what was the biggest bit of growth your team made last year that you can carry into this season? Edder, what, what did you guys, what clicked last year? I think it was confidence. Like, like he said, uh, we had eight freshmen coming in, so and there were like eight starters that were freshmen, so I feel like confidence was important for them and for us as well as a team, so that's what helped us make it as far as we did. Andy? Yeah, I'd have to agree, and I think the, uh, the kind of character we showed, and, and we kind of all clicked very early on. We knew that we had to depend on some new players, but credit to the new guys. They came in, they were willing to learn, willing to listen, and uh, you know, a few of them had, had incredible years for us, and, and it was up to us juniors to try and kind of mold them into UCLA players and, and make sure they knew what it meant to play for UCLA, um, which is a tremendous honor, and uh, you know, they understood that quickly. Kellen, how great. you got three years ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd have to go with maturity, definitely. Uh, like Edder said, eight freshmen came in, um, five or six started off the bat. It's uh, Towards the end of the season, you really saw the, the freshmen really playing as sophomores or juniors. Well, I hope you all follow UCLA soccer this year. If you can't make it out to Drake Stadium, audio play-by-play -play of all the home matches will be available on UCLABruins.com. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Best Thank of luck in the upcoming year. Thank you here. very much. And we'll be right back with more UCLA Bruin Talk right after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. It's now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Shante Sandiford of the UCLA women's soccer team as our Student Athlete of the Week. The recently graduated redshirt senior will be leading the team from behind as goalkeeper 
for the 2011 season. Sandiford joined the Bruins in 2008 after having transferred from Villanova University. Throughout her time as a Bruin, Sandiford has been ranked second in the Pac-10 amongst women's goalkeepers. In 2009, Sandiford helped a 21-2-1 winning record, ranking an all-time second on UCLA's single-season charts. Good luck to Shantae Sandiford and the women's soccer team as they look forward to the rapidly approaching 2011 season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, visit our website at uclabruins.com. We talk about the fall sports calendar being right around the corner. It's really true for our next guest. Women's volleyball gets started before anybody else. And we have two great members of the program with us, outside hitter Rachel Kidder and head coach Mike Seeley. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thanks for having us. Coach, your second year as the UCLA head coach, how different does it feel going into this season than it did last year? Um, much, much different. You know, when I first got hired, they told me it was really going to take five or six years to understand what it took to be a head coach. And I was saying, ah, yeah, probably I got it figured out. And I didn't. There's, there's a lot of things in preparation that you don't think about. So I think our prep in the spring, getting ready for season, was uh, much more you know, well-developed and we've got all the things covered. Rachel, you uh, had an outstanding effort in the NCAA's 22 kills against Texas, second round loss for the Bruins, but it was a building block. Tell us about your preparation this summer, getting ready for the next year. Um, I think our team's just been working really hard um, in the weight room. We've gone to open gym multiple times a week, trying to just get reps and really practice as much as we can, because the season comes up quick, and we got to make sure that we're putting all the work that we can in this summer to get ready for it. I, I love the fact when I look at the UCLA website, you know, the summertime is pretty quiet, and all of a sudden, you, upcoming events, you've got that volleyball match coming up real quickly. What is the pressure of getting ready for your season when campus is basically deserted? Um, I mean, it kind of helps because there's not much to do, so you're kind of forced to um, get in the weight room, practice. Um, there's not much pressure. I think we just all are pretty motivated on our own to do that like by ourselves. This season, the Bruins beat the Huskies for the first time since 2006. How do you feel having that big win under your belt going into next season? Um, it feels great. I mean, it definitely helps getting big wins like that. Um, the Huskies this year is going to be a battle, but it feels great, and I know we can definitely beat them again this year. Coach, the Bruins were 22-9 and nine last year. A pretty good debut for mm -hmm. you. Uh, how did that meet your expectations? You know, going into the season, we had no expectations. Um, you have goals. My goal is always for the team to be as good as they can possibly be. We never really talk about winning, you know, championship this and that. Uh, you know, we had a meeting with the team, what were, what were their expectations, and, and we kind of met them. Um, for me, last year, there wasn't one match that we weren't in. You know, so nine losses, you know, Pac-10 schedule is very, very difficult, but there wasn't one match in the Pac-10, maybe Washington at Washington, we were a little bit sleepy. But there wasn't one match that we weren't competing with the chance to win. So regardless of what the record was, I thought we were in every single time. Your program, even with Poly Pavilion undergoing renovation, is staying on campus. You're mm -hmm. going to be playing your matches in Collins Court at the John Wooden Center. Uh, that, that, it's going to be an intimidating kind of hot atmosphere in there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a very intimate atmosphere. And when I was an undergrad here, that's where the team played. They played in, in the Wooden Center. And I remember being in a packed house against Stanford when it was number one and two in the country. So it's an amazing environment. Um, I know for some of our bigger matches last year, we got between four or 5,000 people. I know that wooden only seats two and change. So there's definitely going to be some people, some fans left on curbside. So hopefully that creates a buzz and they get there early and get some seats. Rachel, as a player, when the place is sold out and the noise level is so loud you can hardly even think, how do you maintain your composure? How do you focus on, on your game and not on what's going on around you? Um, you kind of just have to get used to blocking out everything around you. Like, we're used to it from other gyms in the Pac-10 that are really loud, loud bands, like lots of fans. So I think that um, it'll be fine in the Wooden Center just as long as we are able to block out the crowd and just really focus on what's going on on the court. Mike, how did your experience as a student athlete affect your decision and how you coach now? Um... Student, you know, I was such a volley dork. It was just volley, <laughs> volley, volley. So it's always been my life. And it was interesting. It's when I, you know, coming back was a dream job, get hired, and it always just felt natural. It seemed like it was going to happen from the get-go and the stars lined up and it just happened. And it didn't really hit me until I went out recruiting the first couple times. And you walk in a gym and there's 500 coaches and I realize that the four letters mean a lot. Right. You know, it's, it's always been my home, so I just associate with home. But when you start... Comparing it to all the, all the schools around, I realized that it was it's an amazing opportunity. It's a 
pretty heavy job. Rachel, your family has long been associated with UCLA. Your dad, John, played on the offensive line for UCLA for four years. Why uh, didn't I know that? You did know that. I thought you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about uh, your earliest memories of UCLA. Um, I mean, ever since I can remember, we've always been like UCLA fans, always watching the football games with my family. Um, my aunt went here also, so from my whole family, we've always been UCLA fans. When did you know that volleyball was going to be for you? Obviously, you're tall. It probably got steered toward basketball, too. When did, when did volleyball become your path? Well, actually, like basketball was kind of my passion and from the beginning, and I played volleyball starting my freshman year of high school. So since then, I kind of knew that I wanted to play, but didn't really think I had a shot because it was new to me, and I was really like not used to the sport at all. But then I think once like sophomore year rolled around, I realized that that's what I wanted to do. Mike, when you take somebody like Rachel, who got to the sport relatively late in their athletic career, mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's natural ability and there's technique. Uh, how do you, as a coach evaluating talent, take a look at somebody who may not have the experience to have great technique yet? Well, thank God Andy Banikowski saw Rachel and knew that she was going to be great and pulled her in, and I'm riding his coattails on, on Rachel right now. Um, you know, it's tough because in women's volleyball, the recruiting happens so early. So you're getting commitments from sophomores you're having freshmen and eighth graders on campus. So it's a little bit ridiculous in that sense, but you know, I guess it's similar to when I coach on the men's side because uh, the men develop later. So you're looking at some big, lanky, gawky kids that you're assuming are gonna be great when they fill out and get strong and kind of find, find their bodies. So it's it, more or less the same, same talent. Now you're just looking at, some pl players are really polished right away. Some are just great frames and great athletes that maybe don't play the sport well. You just hope you can coach them up and kind of get them dialed in. You were a great setter in your... I was a setter, for sure. In your playing <laughs> career. Yeah. Uh, the quarterback on the yeah. floor. How do you think that perspective helps you as a coach, understanding positioning, understanding where you want your players to be? Yeah, I've always thought that setting-wise, you got to understand every position. you got to know when your middle's late. you got to know when they're dragging their arm. you got to know when passers aren't getting feet to ball. Um, so I think it helps a ton. And we, I always tease at my last staff where I worked in Hawaii, all four coaches were setters. And this year, same thing. All the coaches, everyone, all my assistants, everybody was a setter. So we tease that we're the smartest staff out there. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> Rachel, as, a, as an outside hitter, obviously, you're getting up there, you're trying to kill the ball. Um, you have to rely on a lot of those same reads. You've got to know where the play is. You've got to know where the ball is going to be set. What do the fans watching in the stands or watching on TV, what, do they, what should they look at that they may not know about how to see a play developing? Um, I mean, as an outside, it's, it's a lot more complicated than I think people understand. But um, the main thing is looking at seeing the block in front of you. When you have two people right in front of you, you have to know if you can hit on the top, try to hit their hands. Or if there's a hole, you have to be able to see the hole and get there quick before they close it. Um, it's all about just hitting the right area, I think, on the court, knowing where to put the ball. Well, let me ask, I'm going to interrupt because I, I, <laughs> I, I'm curious by your last answer. How do you make those reads so fast when you're still following the ball on your side of the net? Um, <laughs> I think it's just great coaching, usually, <laughs> in that kind of situation. I mean, <laughs> I've just gotten used to it. I mean, it's, like, it's all about your, so I watch the ball first come out of my setter's hands, and then once I know where the set's going, how high it is, how quick it is, I can take a quick glance at the block and... Just, you just got to do it quick. It kind of all happens really fast, but it just comes natural over time. Rachel, Dave mentioned your familial connections with UCLA. For you, now being a student athlete here, what does it mean to you to wear those four letters proudly? It means a lot. Like, I kind of never thought it would happen. As Growing up being a UCLA fan, it was kind of just a dream. Never really thought it would ever happen. And then once I got into volleyball and got that opportunity, just being here, like sometimes it's just I forget like how surreal it is. Like just knowing that like I'm going to UCLA, like representing this team that means so much to me that I've grown up with and that I really just like, I love it. It's awesome. Coach, I'm going to get back to X's and O's for a second. It's going to make me a better broadcaster when All I right. do some of your matches. You got it. On the defensive side, Rachel talked about the block, mm -hmm. talked about sending two, sending one. Who's making the defensive calls while the play is going on? Um, you know, we'll have a scouting report basically for each opponent, so we'll know which are their strong rotations, who their go-to hitters are. The thing I like about next year's team versus last year's is we're bigger so we can kind of block one-on-one. -on -one. So if we're in a situation where they're best hitters in a certain area, I can now send two blockers there, because now I know I can trust Rachel to deal with everybody else by herself. Um, you know, last year, my assistant coach, Dan Connors, was kind of doing the block defensive side. He went off to Nebraska, Dan O'Dell filled in, 
Dan O'Dell will do some of the block defense. I'll kind of fill in. I, I miss being a defensive coordinator. That's what I always did as an assistant. So I don't, the thing, my biggest adjustment as a head coach is not having a clipboard. So I'm sitting between my two coaches that have all the information. So I just got to get much better at really getting dialed into both. So I, I may hold the clipboard a little bit this year mm -hmm. and just get back into to what I love. I guess as a head coach, I'm allowed to make those decisions. You mentioned Andy Banikowski, the longtime mm -hmm. coach, 43 years here, yep. coaching the women. And of course, Al Skates, an institution yep. in Westwood. Uh, you played under Al Skates. Yep. What, what, what lessons have you brought from your experience of being around those great teachers of you the know, game? Every one of Al's players that's gone on to coach has been really successful. I think his game preparation was amazing. And everyone kind of does it now, but he was doing it before anybody knew what it was all about. So I think my game preparation is, is very strong. With Andy, just attention to detail. So I, I think he was very, very organized and, and really had everything dialed in from A to Z and exactly how he wanted things to be. So I think the balance between the two has helped. Coach, how is the team gearing up for this next season? What kind of workouts have the players been participating in this summer to ensure that they're ready for the season? I would have no idea because that would be illegal. Um, no, so th this team reminds me a lot of the title that I won when I was UCLA. Um, I only won it my senior year, and I remember we didn't have any interaction. We didn't have a big team meeting about, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this. Let's meet and let's you know go lift. Let's go play. No one spoke. Everyone just went home. And everyone showed up after the summer, and everyone had added 10 pounds, and they're, they're big, and they're physical, and they're playing great. Same thing with these girls. I haven't seen them because I've been traveling and recruiting, kind of taking our downtime, and we show up. Like we just had camps, so all the girls are working in camp and doing demos. And I, I couldn't believe how good everybody was. So I think everyone made an individual commitment of what they wanted to do without having to hold each other accountable and just came back and they're just ready to go. We're ready to go too. You get to this part of the year, you just start getting excited about the new season and we're thrilled that you came in to give us a preview of UCLA Women's Volleyball. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. And thank you for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. You can follow Women's Volleyball. There's going to be live audio of all the home matches on UCLABruins.com and of course they're playing right down the hill at Collins Court at the John Wooden Center. That's going to do it for Allison Taylor. I'm Dave Marcus saying so long. We'll see you next time with another great show. For now, bye from Westwood. <laughs>